Hey, it's Guy Raz here, and I am excited to introduce you to my friend Mindy Thomas. She is the co-host of NPR's incredible new podcast for kids. It's called Wow in the World, and every week we'll take you and your kids on amazing adventures through the world of wonder and mystery and imagination. Subscribe to Wow in the World however you get your podcasts. Wow in the world. Hello and welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Department of Inspiration here at Car Talk Plaza. Well, it may be inspiration and it may not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's it's a little commentary, I guess, and I I don't know who sent this to us, but it's from, uh, it's right away, you know, it's interesting because it's from the Journal of Radical Mediocrity. <laughs> right away, you know that... Something's going. Wait, wait, no, right. there, there are wackos involved. <laughs> there are wackos involved. Who are the unmotivated? Are they losers who just don't get it? Who refuse to hold a job or join the human rat race? The unmotivated are, in fact, people who do get it, who know it's all a scam, who refuse to be led by corporate and religious wranglers to the slaughter. Wow. Huh? It takes great will and integrity to remain unmotivated in the face of society's constant motivational assault. Work hard, follow the rules, and fulfill your potential to keep up with the Joneses. Wow. Wow. The haves promote delayed gratification to the have-nots. Oh, this this is profound stuff, man. This, I told you, this is more than inspiration. You'll go to heaven when you die. In the meantime... You gotta work your butt off. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to do everything you always wanted to do when you retire. Right. And in the meantime, you've got to what? <laughs> work your, work your, work your butt off. <laughs> there is no greater struggle for the human race than to remain unmotivated. Only through lack of motivation can we crush this evil scheme to chain us to our jobs and our mortgages. Wow. Freedom yeah. is only one unproductive day away. <laughs> This is profound stuff, man. Slackers of the world unite. <laughs> exactly. I knew that you would love it. I do. I do. Is there, they have a website? <laughs> it reminded no, me. No, of course not. They haven't been motivated <laughs> They're enough. They're not motivated you. enough to have a website. <laughs> it reminded me of H.L. Mencken's great quote, only the mediocre can always be at their best. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you have a question about your car, or, or anything else you'd like answered in a, in a mediocre fashion, the number to call is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're We'll get a lot of nasty mail on this. You know? Hello? Oh, this, uh, this is deep stuff. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Daniel from Manitou Springs, Colorado, originally from Harvard, Massachusetts. Daniel, have you been inspired? Dude, I'm a poster boy for these guys. You are, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, you are. You're totally unmotivated. Uh, well, you know, I'm not totally, but I'm sure that my father's thinking that there's no coincidence that I'm on I'm talking to you on this show. Uh -huh. And you were an art history major in what university? <laughs> <laughs> uh, political science at University of New Hampshire. Political science, that's the same thing, only different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But most of my brothers are the same. We, yeah, we, we have got a whole family of these guys. What, so anyway, what, what's the nature of your call? So I've got a 1989 Honda Prelude. 2.0 SI uh, with a automatic transmission, and this is the car my fiance drives. Automatic transmission. I was living in LA at the time. Okay. Oh, okay. You get that? Now? Yeah. yeah that's stuck so... in traffic all the time. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Wanted to save my knees, so I. <laughs> <laughs> my fiance comes home the other day and she says, "You know, there's something wrong with the car. The speedometer doesn't work. The check engine light is on. The S3 um, indicator, which is that sports transmission." Uh, indicator on the dashboard yeah. is blinking. I laughed and took it for a drive, and it's running fine. And, and what light was on again? The the, the, the uh... speedo's not working. The check engine light is on, and there's a little a little light that tells you when you switch from regular shifting pattern to the sports shifting. Exactly, and that one is blinking. The S three. It's blinking. Blink. Right. You're in you're in sport mode. Exactly, but I'm not in sport mode. I'm in regular drive, but the S three light is blinking. Well. No, this 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 shouldn't play. This thing, this vehicle has a computer that shifts the transmission, right? And uh, 
I don't, I don't think you really want to know what it costs, uh, <laughs> but it could it could be cooked, uh -huh. and that's the reason that the check engine light is on. There's nothing wrong with the engine per se, right. but there's something wrong with, with the computer, with the well, with the engine management system, and, and the and the transmission is part of that. Okay. So if, for example, it it's stuck in the in the sport mode and won't allow you to go into the other mode. It could indicate that there's either some mechanical problem with the transmission or there's something wrong with the computer. And I'm going to guess it's in the computer. Well, wouldn't it be nice, though, if it were just a speed sensor? It, it, wouldn't that be good? Because it, if that, that would explain it, too, because now the computer's not getting a signal from the speed sensor. It doesn't know what to do about shifting. Right. That would explain the speedometer not operating. It would explain maybe the light flashing and the, and the check engine light being on. Yeah. So it could be something. It's shifting fine. It, I mean, it, I put it in drive. I throw it in the. I can shift it around no problem through the you know the sport shift. But that stuff's going on. But are you sure it's it's shifting through all the gears? Yeah. It is. I, you know what? Actually, when I took it out, I had it in sport and it revved really high. Hmm. It, yeah. it got up to about six five before it decided to pop down. She's aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I I hate to say this, but there's a an outside chance here. Yeah. That my brother's right. Uh oh. That the vehicle speed sensor is the culprit. And and it's and it's maybe in what's called limp home mode. <laughs> no, in other words, the, the, the if in the absence of the computer telling the transmission when to shift, it has programmed into it preset shift points. Right. And and it may be doing that. Uh oh. It may be doing that now. But so it could be this vehicle speed sensor is cheap. The computer. Okay. No, this is not bad news. Yeah, okay, the okay. computer, if you oh, need okay. that, is many, many hundreds. All right. But you need to go and, uh, and and have somebody hook the machine up to it. Yeah, but I mean, if everything runs. Yeah, it does. You could just forget yeah, about it. Yeah, and don't it. forget, you're a slacker, so you don't have to do anything. That's a good point. I wouldn't fix it. See okay. you, see you, Daniel. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. <laughs> Thanks, good luck. Call. Bye bye. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven. 8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Liz from Columbia, Missouri. Hi, Liz. How, How are, are you? you? Great. Yeah, that good. Columbia Mo. <laughs> Columbia, Missouri. That is correct. Yeah, so what's up, Liz? Okay, this is my problem. Yeah. My husband finishes up his residency here in Missouri at the end of June. Oh. And he's interested in a Porsche. And he's looking at used Porsches. Wait, wait. He's just finishing his residency and he's got enough money for a Porsche already? A used Porsche, yes. Wow. This is my this is my question. He's looked at a 928. It's only got 38,000 miles on it. Hmm. My question is this. That the car's never been driven when it rains, and it's only driven on weekends. Now, my husband is not good with cars. Now, this car is a Porsche. I know it's got to be serviced any time it putters something. My question is this. What is this going to run me to keep this car running? Well, first of all, the question is, is this an appropriate vehicle for a doctor? And it depends on what his specialty is. I mean, is he a real doctor that has to make emergency calls, or is he like a wuss, like a dermatologist? Uh, he's a cardiothoracic surgeon, so he operates on hearts and lungs. Oh, he's going to have to get there in no, I mean... Like, no time flat. Well, no that's why he wants flat. the Porsche, because the Porsche, you, you well, no, turn he the key the and you're right there. He wants the Porsche, so he looks good in it. He could get a, a car that drives fast, but... He, he wants to... How old is your husband? He is 34. 34? Wow. What do they want for this 928? Do you know? Um, my guess, I think, is around fourteen five. Cheaper enough. Oh, wow. Now, how much is the upkeep actually oh, going to be? It's, you know, oh, it's man. going to be brutal. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm the money person, so that's yeah. why he's, he's got to get pushed it through me before he. Well, can. I mean, he's saving people's lives with his thoracics. Those are, I mean, the least you could do is write a couple of checks once in a while. Liz. Well, yeah, but he has two kids and a wife to support. Yeah, uh -huh. and you too. <laughs> he's gonna have to do. A, he's gonna have to do a lot of unnecessary surgery. <laughs> Well, I know it's just a pimple, but if you don't take care of these things early, anything could happen. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to have to take your heart out. <laughs> you won't mind, Send will you? Send it over for a rebuild. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, repairs are extraordinarily expensive. Give me, give me I mean, a pretty call. soon, Liz, I mean, the dough's going to just be rolling it's in. It's not going to matter. Uh, well, let, let's put it this way. He's 34 getting his first job, so you can imagine the amount of debt. Yeah, but, but yeah, but you're, you're the money person. You, you he, obviously he's been consumed by his studies and and whatever for the last twenty five years. <laughs> twenty thousand years, yeah. And, twenty thousand. And, and you've been forced to take over all the household responsibilities, including paying the bills. And I'm sure you've done a very good job of it. Yes. But it's time to 
let go. Really? I think so. What are you suggesting here? Let him do whatever he wants. But what's going to be my monthly cost at, at Hans, the, uh, the dealer? Well, it depends on what kind of shape it's in. Uh-huh. And hopefully... It, it almost makes no difference what kind of shape it's in. <laughs> I think it's, it's going to be on the order of, two, on average, $200 a month. Okay. I was going to say five. <laughs> All right, five. <laughs> okay, let's go with the higher number. No, let's just, let's just, split the difference. Okay. Four. Three, 350. 350. Okay. That's nothing. But see, you guys don't understand. He bought a vehicle once. When I was out of town, it was a total lemon. And I'll never let him live that <laughs> oh, down. Oh, you can't trust him, in other words. No, no. So this guy is taking people's hearts out of their chests. <laughs> He's breaking through a person's rib cage with a chainsaw. He's good at that. Pulling out the guy's heart and holding it in his hands. Exactly. And you don't trust him to buy a car. That is correct. And so how many of us are going to trust him to take our hearts out of our chests? Well, no, he's very good at that. I just don't ah. trust him with money. No, he's, he's just too focused on what he does. Thank and that's good. God for that. You want those you guys want to be... You want him to be focused. Yeah. You and you those... don't want him to be angry or depressed. Or deprived. <laughs> or deprived in any I mean, way. Liz will be doing a disservice to his patients if you don't just write the check for the Porsche and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck, Liz. I'm I'm happy to know that you will come out of this deep depression having to do with money, <laughs> and and forget about all you owe. Okay. Because I mean they've probably written it all off anyway. Yeah, don't worry. And they're about not going to take back his medical degree just because he doesn't pay his bills. Oh, I don't know about that. Ah, uh, they won't. They, they can't. Won't. You can always go to Uruguay. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, I, then you can tell me how to fix the Uruguay pickup. <laughs> yes. Call us when you get there. <laughs> Uruguayan pickup. See you, Liz. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Fourteen five is peanuts. It is. It's but it's it's, peanuts. The, it's the repair bills that are going to kill Oh, them. man. Yeah, little do they know. Little do they know. Oh, that's all right. But it'll be fun. And, and like I said, pretty soon the dough is going to start. They will be amazed. When yeah. it doesn't. one oh. 888 talk <laughs> That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Nick in Jupiter. Jupiter? Florida? Yep. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? What happens in Jupiter, Florida? I mean, I thought it was just retired people. Well, no. Actually, the average age in this part of the county is uh, 44, so we're not retired yet. We're all working hard. 44? Yep. That's the average age. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, but they are a lot of gray hair. There's a lot of gray hair around here. Yeah. What do you do in Jupiter? Uh, we have a practice management company. We manage the doctor's practices. Yeah. Mm. The God knows they need it. Uh, yeah, well, there's <laughs> a lot of them, too. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's shaking, Nick? Well, we have a, a Montero uh, LS. It's a four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And we use it. Our cur courier uses it. And we go all the way from, like, Miami to... Um, Melbourne and as far west as the lake. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, we put about 950 miles a week on it. But we've had this problem is that it, it drinks oil. But now it doesn't smoke. Mm. And he'll come and he'll tell me that, you know, well, I had to put three quarts in it today. And you know, okay. And then the next week will go by three. and put another quart in. On average, how many quarts a week? Uh, three. And three. that's over a thousand miles. A thousand roughly. miles, yeah. Really? Yeah, but a guy took it to this gas station, and, uh, you know, we've taken it there, and they've looked underneath. There's no leaks. I mean, if I park it, you, when you drive away, there's no mm. leaks there. One guy, though, put his hand in the tailpipe and came up with oil, and he said, I was blowing oil out of the tailpipe. I'll bet you are. Uh, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, without it smoking or nothing. Well, I mean, just, uh, it, it is smoking, but it's smoking so little that you can't see it. Unless you get to a point where you're consuming a quarter every 50 or 100 miles, uh -huh. it's almost unnoticeable. Oh. One test to find that if you're burning oil, which undoubtedly you are because you're what? Not leaking it and no yeah. one's stealing it. But if you want to satisfy your curiosity, uh -huh. park the thing in a, in a garage, you know, right. an enclosed garage, and don't open the door when you start it in the morning. <laughs> Just for a few seconds, and you will notice that in that time, uh -huh. the garage has filled up with blue-tinted smoke, yeah. oh. and, and that's the oil. I don't think there's much you can do about this, because it's probably worn rings. Oh, but, no. Uh, yeah. That sounds expensive. It is expensive. But yeah, I it's, just... but it's not, because you're not going to do anything. No? Oh, good. Do you have one of those Dymo, uh, what do they call those, label makers? Yeah. You have one? Yeah. Make a label that's, that says, check oil every day and 
affix it to the dashboard, right where the gear shift. Yeah, make lever five is. or six of them actually. Put them everywhere. Shift lever. See what happens is if the thing holds five quarts of oil. Once you've burned the first, let's say it takes you six hundred miles to burn the first quart. Uh-huh. The next, you, you have now four remaining quarts trying to do the work of five. You'll burn the next quart in four hundred miles. You'll burn the next quart in a hundred miles. Oh. And then you'll burn the next quart on your way to the junkyard because you'll, <laughs> you'll have ruined the engine. So the oil burns at an accelerated rate once it gets low. So the less you, of it there is. So if you if you keep an eye on it and add a quart whenever it needs it, yeah. you might you might be able to get away with burning a quart every five hundred or six hundred miles instead of three quarts every you know eighteen hundred miles or yeah. whatever. Ah, uh, okay. So you got to when it needs a quart, you've got to add it. Buy it by the case, put it in the back. You got plenty of room. Yeah. And yeah, and maybe one of these doctors you consult for can set you up with some kind of intravenous feeder. <laughs> You know, something they've discarded. I could just see it going down the road now with this oil IV. Actually, it would be a great advertisement, wouldn't it? Yeah. It says practice management on the side and an intravenous bottle (laughs) hanging there. From the antenna. From the antenna, exactly. This is a great idea. What a marketing idea. (laughs) Nick, we've hit upon it. You could have made our day. (laughs) Good luck. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I love it. All right, I think it's time to go back and, and answer last week's puzzler. Well, I do remember that we had a puzzler last week. That's good. Do you remember what it was about? Uh, you should have quit while you were ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'll tell you. It was about a secret code. Ah, secret code. I remember the world of undercover operatives, espionage, miniature recording devices. Mm, no, not that romantic. This <laughs> is the world of beer, actually, and we'll have... All the details and more of your calls coming up in just a minute, so please stay tuned. She's so much like a woman. She's a blue mobile. Talking about the blue mobile. Just keep rolling along. Talking about that blue mobile. And even though Javanese hot coal walkers wince in pain whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Tire Rack. Now, if you're like me and you own a car, you've probably done something dumb to it. Like the time I ran out of oil and used a quart of Filippo Berrio extra virgin olive oil as a substitute. Well, Tire Rack makes it easy to be smart when it comes to your tires. At TireRack.com, you can look up the correct tires for your car and pick the best ones based on ratings and reviews. Plus, your new tires can be delivered in as little as one business day to a recommended local installer. So even if you forget to release the parking brake or send your brother's 65 AMC ambassador to the crusher, you can still redeem yourself by getting the right tires. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install, smarter. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and the, the answer to last week's puzzler. Now, I don't know who sent this in because the author listed himself or herself as anonymous donor. <laughs> Didn't want his or her name associated with our show in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> I guess. Well, that narrows it down to one of four and a half million, seven million, twelve million people. <laughs> well, here it is. You ready? Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna... I'm, I'm, I'm dying to remember it. It's a secret code. Remember espionage? No. No, I don't know. There's an unusual ah! little bar, and in this bar, you can get a free beer if you know the secret code. I remember. And the secret code works like this. You sit down at the bar, and the bartender tells you a number, and you tell him another number. If it's right, you get a free beer. For example, a customer goes up to the bar, and the bartender says, six. The customer says, three, gets his free beer. Yeah. A second customer goes to the bar, and the bartender says, twelve. The customer says, six. He gets his free beer. Yeah. Looking pretty good, huh? You're going to figure it out? A no. third customer sits at the bar, and the bartender says, 14. The customer says, 7, right? No. The customer says, 8. And no. he gets a free beer. He does, with 8. With 8. You're sitting there, and the bartender turns to you and says, 22. 
You say I have to go to the bathroom anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say if you want a free beer? You say, what's the secret code? <laughs> 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 well, you would think, you know, you, yeah, you, you were cruising right along until you, know, you said 14 and 8. Yeah. And 22, if you were the customer and said 9, you'd get a free beer. That's how many letters there are. In 22. In 22. 6, 3, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 12, 6, 14, 8. Oh, jeez. Cute, huh? Do we have a winner? You bet we do. The winner this week is Adam Leff from Lewiston, Maine. And for having his answer selected at random from among all the correct answers that we got, Adam is going to get a $26 gift certificate to the Shameless Commerce Division and our website, cartalk.com. With that gift certificate, he can get a copy of our CD slash drink coaster, <laughs> Car Talk Cartoons, America's Best Disrespectful Car Songs. Wow. Anyway, we'll have a brand new, <laughs> brand new, I guess I'd have to call it automotive puzzler coming up in the third half of today's show, so stay tuned for that. It may not be automotive. I may change my mind. You in may. the meantime... If you'd like to call us about anything, the number is one eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Tom. How you doing? Tom, where you from, Tom? Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton. You know, I was in I was in Trenton just the other day. No kidding. And I was standing on the train, the Amtrak platform. Okay. And I struck <laughs> up a conversation with a guy next to yeah, me. Yeah, it was it was the basis of it was this. Got any spare change? <laughs> 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 that would be the kind of conversation you'd have at the Trenton Railroad Station. But he said, I used, he, after we started talking, he said, I used to live in Trenton and I never come back here if I don't have to because it is the worst city in the country. Oh, that's mean. Yeah, it is. I, I'm just, I'm just telling you what the guy said. He said, I moved out of Trenton when I got mugged five <laughs> days in a row. Oh, God. This poor guy came home from work five contiguous days, and every night on his way home from work, somebody beat him up and took his money. You know, the trend not his wallet, because on the second day, he didn't have a wallet anymore. Right. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> pinned to his undershirt. You know that Trenton used to be the capital of the United States? Yep. Get out of here. It was. It was for a short period of time. A week. Yeah. <laughs> they mugged everyone, and they left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, so, if you have a serious I, question, come on, we're killing valuable time here. <laughs> and nobody will visit Trenton now for the next 20 <laughs> yeah. years. So what's up, Tom? Well, I drive a 1994 Honda Del Sol SI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's got 102,000 miles on it. About six months ago, the car had been sitting in my driveway for about a week. My wife and I were away on vacation. And I got in the car to start the car up to go to work, and nothing. Battery's dead. It's not doing mm -hmm. a thing. So I called somebody to give me a jump. Got it. Started up fine. So I took the car to the dealer because uh, I was concerned that maybe there was a problem with the battery. And sure enough, the battery was, was gone. It was dead. Hmm. They replaced the battery, and I went on my merry way. About a week and a half later, I'm driving to work, and my engine light comes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I called the dealer. Brought the car down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You need... He said, your ECU is bad, which, oh. yeah, oh. exactly. Bummer. That's, that's and, the car's computer, for those right. that don't know. And the, he econ said, the economic control unit. <laughs> well, he said, the price of the part is about $1,200. Yeah. And then with the labor, it's probably $1,500. Mm -hmm. He also said, these things don't go bad very often. He said, it's very rare. That's true. I think we've replaced one Honda computer in forever. Okay, right. And it started making me think, is mm -hmm. it possible that mm -hmm. getting the car jumped could have done something to the ECU, yeah. even though it didn't show up as bad until a week and well, a half later? See, the mind is a terrible thing. <laughs> I know, isn't it? Yeah. More importantly, is it possible <laughs> yeah, that right. you can blame this on somebody else and get your 1500 no. bucks back? <laughs> People at work thought that's the reason why I was going to call. And I really, it's really not. It's just educational. Right. Well, certainly if you hook up the cables backward, you can cook everything on any car. Mm-hmm. Uh, and certainly you could cook the computer. Usually if you do that, if you hook the cables up incorrectly, the car won't start. It may even catch fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something will usually blow up. So there's a, a definite sign that they did it wrong. Usually. Yeah, Although, I mean, when you, were you, you were there when, the, when who jumped the car? AAA or some garage? Well, it was, it was somebody that AAA, you know, yeah. somebody that works with. And you, know, you were there. With. 
I was there. I watched him do it. You watched him do it. You turned the key and the car started right up. Right up. And how, how soon after that did the light come on? About a week and a half later. I doubt they're related. So you don't think they're related? Almost impossible. No. Mm-hmm. So I don't think this guy did anything wrong to your car. I think it was just bad luck. Yeah, that's... Yeah, and it runs all right now? Everything's oh, it, good? Runs, it runs fine. It's a, it's a great car. It's yeah. got 102,000 miles on it. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't go away anymore. <laughs> one, one safer thing to do, by the way, uh, for anyone who has a dead battery, is to actually disconnect the battery before you charge it. Oh. Okay. Okay. You, it's, it's not really jump-starting. So you, if your battery were dead, you could take the battery out uh-huh. or have the car towed to a, a gas station. Mm-hmm. They would disconnect the cables from the battery and just charge up the battery. I and then see. when the battery is charged, they would disconnect the charger and hook your cables back up, and there's no risk whatsoever then. And that's the safest thing to do. I see. Now, if you had somebody come and give you a jump, would well, they be able to do that as well? No. No, unless you wanted right, to because, spend, no, they couldn't because no. the cables would have to be. If you connected. wanted to spend the morning with them and have have a latte and brioche, <laughs> right? You know, but those guys don't do latte and brioche. No. So that's really the best way to do it. That's the safest way. Disconnect the battery and have it. Yeah. Have it charged. But I, would, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, what are the chances it could happen again? <laughs> That's the kind of thing I worry about. <laughs> See, yeah. Good luck, Tom. Thanks a lot, Don't guys. worry. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. All righty. Wait a minute. If the truck drivers don't do latte embryos, what do they do? They do, like, Miller High Life at 7 o'clock in the morning? Well, I don't know what they do, but I don't think latte and brioche is included. <laughs> one 888 Is that some talk. kind of a blanket derogatory statement about tow truck No, it's just, it's just an observation. I mean anything by it? It's just a sweeping generalization. Have we not alienated enough people? Well, tow truck drivers. Never mind. You have I don't to screw up don't. tow truck drivers too. <laughs> yeah, you know you ought you ought not to mess with them. <laughs> don't mess with them. That's like the guy at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, funny man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did uh, I interrupt you? I'm sorry. One eight 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 car talk. That's eight 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 double two seventy eight twenty five five. Hello, you're, <laughs> hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Julie from Indianapolis. Julie? Yeah. What's up? Well, my Honda Accordion. I mean, Honda Accord. Uh-huh. Yeah, what about it? Well, it seems to attract other large objects. Uh-huh. And I've uh, crunched it three times in about 15 months. Yeah. My question is, do the electrical problems ever go away? It, it's got like a lot of, I don't know, phantom ghost type things under the hood. Well, if you keep smashing it up, that will happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what these accidents that have taken place? They've been front end accidents. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah. About total of about eleven thousand dollars. Oh, what's your problem, Julie? It's not my problem. I hate to blame it on Indianapolis drivers, but I just seem to attract. One of them was over a stupid duck, and the look, duck lived, and my front end didn't. Look, just today, I was discussing with my sister, who has the same kind of problem as you. Every car she's ever owned, somehow. It attracts things, like just like you're claiming here. Yeah, it's a magnet. And, yeah, and except that a lot of times they're things like trees. No. And I keep explaining to her, the trees didn't jump out in front of you. The trees are where they are. And she denies. She thinks the trees actually move around and follow her. But you are Calamity Julie. Calamities follow you around. I think so. All right, so we'll, we'll accept that. But the, but the electrical problems that you're having may, in fact, be directly related to the accidents. Oftentimes, the car gets smashed up. The body gets fixed and it gets painted and gets to look like new, except usually in an accident, pieces of metal get bent and twisted and whatever, and wires get stretched and sometimes disconnected, but not necessarily immediately. Exactly. So or wires get pinched between two pieces of metal, and then over a period of time, even though that pinch is removed, the wires whose insulation got got worn away by the by the collision right. begin to short out and fuses blow, etc., etc. And et these things are really, really hard to find. Exactly. I've gone through that. As a matter of fact, after the first accident, I had these weird symptoms, and the car would lose complete power while I was driving. Yeah. No power brakes, no steering, no nothing. And yeah. they searched for about eight hundred dollars worth and found it, and it cost twelve bucks to fix it. Well, if it you did. have if you have this proclivity to do this with cars, I hope it's over. Well, it may not be. It's probably part of your basic nature. So I would recommend that you get rid of the Accord now while you still can, and go for a much larger vehicle. <laughs> Preferably like five or six years old. Okay. That way, when you have these little confrontations, so to speak, huh? you're less likely to do damage to it because you'll destroy the car that you hit. I got it. So this one's through. This, these things are just going to keep popping up. Oh, they, I mean, they could. I mean, it's purely random. This is what your, your basic uh, brownie in motion. 
No, no, no. Bad luck comes in threes. Everyone knows that. It's in the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> no, no, no. It does not. Because you never know which set of three you're working on. It comes in threes or multiples of three. Well, if she has a, a four, then she knows she's working on two multiples and get rid of it. But until the fourth accident occurs, keep it. Okay. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Mark from Half Moon Bay, California. Mark with a K, half. Uh, no, Mark with a C. Okay. It used to be Maurice, but I dropped three vowels for Eastern European solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> Just to even things out. <laughs> well, you know, that's good. We all have way too many vowels in our names, especially us. <laughs> You know, that's humanitarian of you, man. I think more people should do it. <laughs> so should we call you Mars? <laughs> so, yeah, call me what you want. So Half Moon Bay. Yeah, it's uh, just south of San Francisco. It's very nice there, I remember. Oh, it is. It's very nice. It's cool. You get good artichokes and Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Everywhere. Uh, I hate Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mark. What's what, up? What's going, what's going well, on? I was taking a long trip up the Central Valley, Highway 5, and mm-hmm. um, I was checking my mileage with the computer on the dashboard. And I stopped for gas, and I noticed my mileage went up from 24 to 29 miles to a gallon. Cool. And at first I thought, hey, good gas, but then I noticed that the uh, gas cap was off. Uh-huh. And uh, so I'm wondering uh, how the computers work, how accurate are they? Mm, they have to measure exactly how much gas is going in there to make the calculation. And... No, they, they don't do any of that. It's it's done with it, vacuum. Well, well, some of it is done with with engine vacuum, but a lot of it is done using the available inputs that the the engine and transmission have, and it can tell, for example, from the position of the throttle sensor how how hard you're accelerating. It can it can tell from the speed sensor how what your rate of change of speed is. Mm-hmm. Okay, which they couldn't do with just a speedometer cable. So they have some kind of an algorithm that determines. You know, it says when all these inputs say this, then the the the, uh, the little is, dial instantaneous should... mileage should be eleven miles to the gallon. But it's inaccurate. Oh yeah, it's, well it's, it's pretty good. Well, I mean, it's not as accurate as actually measuring the miles and, and dividing by the the gallons. Well, I've got to tell you, I'll tell you a little story that'll give you some insight into how accurate this this thing. Go is. for it. So we we get cars to test drive, and we had a Lincoln Town car that Doug Berman was driving, and he drove it around long enough so that the low-fuel warning system kicked in. This is when, like, the missiles come out of the silos <laughs> and, the, and the whole thing. So he says, oh, you want to swap cars? I was driving, you know, something like a Hyundai, and I couldn't imagine why he'd give up a Lincoln Town car until I got in there and I and I saw the thing flashing zero miles to empty. <laughs> and I said, hmm. Zero miles empty. I wonder how long this son of a gun drove this thing around to get it down to zero miles <laughs> to empty. Because, he of just, course, the light had obviously been on for days. Because the light comes on when you've got, like, 40 or 50 miles. Yeah, and it showed 40 miles to empty, 35 miles to empty. He just kept going around the block, around and around and, and around. So I wonder if I can get it to read zero. And he did. And, and I he, wonder if I can give it to Ramey before <laughs> it runs out of gas. And did, he did. did. Did you make it to the station? No, I didn't. <laughs> So, so I mean, it does read, you know, I mean, again, it might have been just luck, and this is the only chance we've had. I haven't had a chance to reciprocate, unfortunately, but uh, but I've tried Don't many worry, times. Don't worry, I have people in the times. garage right now <laughs> taking care of that. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, obviously the thing works by reading the amount of gas that's in the tank and, and doing some kind of a calculation and figuring out, you know, what, what you have left in there and what your mileage is to empty. And But having the gas cap off would have yeah. no effect whatsoever. No. Well, it changed the reading on the because uh, I put the gas cap back on, dropped back down to twenty four. Oh, it may have you know what, you know what it may have done. It may have changed the reading of the of the gauge because hmm. the tank is pressurized. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't have made any difference. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have made a difference right away. So you don't think we're going to solve the fuel import crisis by driving around with our caps off, though? Well, I, I don't wear a hat. <laughs> I don't wear a hat anymore myself. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and and Mars. Yeah. <laughs> the entire Euro- Eastern European, all the Eastern European nations, thank you for your help. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for calling. Call. Right. Hey, <laughs> Look at, uh, I think it's time for us to take a little break. A break? Now? Aren't we, like, almost finished? 
We've been finished for years, but we still have to take a break. <laughs> we'll be back with a brand new puzzler and more of your calls in just a minute. 18 feet, bumper to bumper of chrome and steel. Hold you like a baby when you slide behind the wheel. Ain't got no console, there ain't no shifting gears. If you like Cadillacs, baby, well, I got yours right here. I got 40 miles of black top squarely in my sights. I got metal to metal, got my baby by my side. It's bigger than Mercury, sexier than Ford. Room in the back for you, me, and that pretty little friend of yours. And even those dogs bury their master's radios in their <laughs> backyards whenever they hear us say it. This is NPR. Thanks for listening to Car Talk. You know, NPR has a great new way for you to get the news each morning, a podcast called Up First. Give them 10 minutes and you'll find out the big stories and big ideas of the day. It's the stuff you really need to know and why it matters. Start your day with Up First weekday mornings by 6 a.m. Eastern Time on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Support for the Car Talk podcast comes from Zip Recruiter. If you're looking for top talent, with ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100-plus job sites with just one click. Let ZipRecruiter's powerful technology match your job to the right candidates and use their simple dashboard to find the right hire. That's why 80% of jobs on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just one day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com first. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers. And we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the, the mm. new puzzler. Yeah, make it good, man. Oh. <laughs> you had to spoil it. This came from someone named Rob, uh, who, you, who used to work for Applied Logic, because that was his uh, email address, but I'm sure you got... No, he's fired by now. For yeah. unauthorized use of the uh, Com- e- of yeah, company, company time, email, email, yeah. email and all that. Gone. Yeah. Anyway, here it goes. My wife owns a 92 Olds Achiever with a quad four five-speed manual transmission and all that other stuff, power everything. One morning, she's heading out to work, and she comes back into the house and says, my car won't start. I go out, and I listen as she tries to start the car. She turns the key, Zippo, Mm. not even a click. Being in a hurry, she takes my car, so I put the battery charger on her car, and later in the day, I go out, and I start it right up. I drive it around a bit to charge the battery. Everything's fine. The next day, the exact same thing happens. Right, she tr- she turns the key, Zippo. Yeah. I visit a website and I find instructions for determining if there's a drain on the battery and all that. I do mm. the test. I find out there's no drain. So what would any half intelligent person do? Goes out and buys a new battery. Sure. So the new battery is installed. The next problem, the next morning rather, same problem with the brand new battery. So we push the car out and I jumped it from my car. I get in it. I turn the key and 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 I drive her car to the dealership, and she follows in, in my car. They call back later to report that they couldn't find a darn thing wrong with it, but we're charging us $180 nevertheless. <laughs> Tammy. We told them, let it sit there overnight and try it in the morning. They called the next morning and said what? It nope. Started right started up. Started like a shot. Oh. So we go to the dealer. My, geographic. So my it's wife geographic, says, bro. my wife gets in with her keys, turns the key, won't start. Oh. <sighs> And we're standing there scratching our heads. I don't believe it. You don't believe it, do you? <laughs> you don't believe it. I don't. It's at, brilliant, though. And at which point I ask her, did you just buy something for your car? Yeah. And she and says, says, yes. Yes, I did. The question is, what did she buy and why, in addition to the battery? Yeah. What did she buy that was preventing it from starting? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on a postcard. Man. Or, better still, but only slightly better still, a mahogany humidor <laughs> filled with <laughs> hand-rolled Cuban cigars. Mahogany. Monterey yeah. Excaliburs, <laughs> to uh, be precise. Yeah, yeah. And send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our very fair city. Ma 02238. Or you can email your answer from cartalk.com. If you'd like to call us, the number is 1-888-CAR-TALK. 
That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, guys. Hi, who's this? This is Candace. 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 I'm calling from Endwell, New York. Endwell? Endwell. Oh, I thought it was underwear. Endwell. (laughs) All's well that ends well. Endwell, New York. Yeah, it's near Binghamton. Near Binghamton. Yeah, now do you know where it is? Of course. So what's on your mind, Candace? Okay, well... This is really weird. Okay, my boyfriend, he's just learning how to drive standard, Mm -hmm. and his dad is teaching him to put it in neutral when he's downshifting, when he comes to a stop sign, instead of downshifting. And my dad has always taught me to downshift, and so it's kind of like a little war between my dad and his dad on who's right. Yeah, so if you're coming to the stop sign, your, your father has told you, if you're in third gear, throw it in second gear, and and slow down, Yeah. let the clutch out. Yes. Let's slow down that way. Yes. Let the engine slow you down. And, and then, then what? Then and what? then throw it in neutral. Is that, I mean, when you finally stop, do you throw it in neutral? No. You don't really stop. You just do a Texas rolling stop? <laughs> yeah, I kind of put it in the first and And just keep right on going. And just wait for the light to turn oh, green. Oh, so your last you shift, you downshift in the first, and instead of letting the clutch out, what you do is you just sit there in first with your foot on the brake, rearing to go as soon as the light turns green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to your boyfriend and his father... And and Who that, says that school it? of thought is you're coming to a stop sign. When you get to the stop sign, throw it in neutral. Don't downshift. Whatever gear you happen to be in, slow down with your foot on the brake. Throw it in neutral and leave it in neutral with your foot off the clutch. And when the, when the light changes, if it's a light, then shift it into first and go. Have, have we, have we uh, represented these two positions correctly, yeah, but fairly? They, yes, you have. But they also have these other little things where my dad says, if you if you're in neutral, you don't have any control over the car. So if a cat goes in front of you, it'll be harder for you to stop or something. And then my boyfriend's dad also says that when it's in neutral, you save on gas. Uh huh. So uh, we have so cats what, uh, on the one hand. No, there's the safety issue on one. <laughs> cats and, versus gas. Uh huh. Or safety versus cheapness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, let me I get that. To know who was right. Well, I'm, I'm not sure we've represented the two sides correctly then because. Is your boyfriend coasting in neutral to the stop? Yes. From what? From how long a distance? I I have no idea. It's just whenever he starts slowing down, like he'll be at the top of a hill, and then he'll just put it in neutral instead of downshifting. Okay. Oh, that's a different situation. So how, not, how long have you been going with this boyfriend? Um, a little over two years. Two years. Two huh? years. How old are you, Candace? I'm nineteen. Nineteen. You're nineteen, and he's about the same, huh? He's about a year younger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a younger mm. man. <laughs> yeah. You little devil, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of personal relationships, every once in a while, I told you the other day, I walked into the house, and my wife was on the phone talking to, unfortunately, her sister. And my wife is saying, he said what? <laughs> and evidently, her sister had heard one of those shows where Jennifer warned me that I would be sleeping in the garage. And you were right. And it was fun. <laughs> with her raccoons. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell I, I well, thanks for calling, You notice Candace. I never make fun of my wife. No, no you don't. No, no don't. because I realize that... that yeah. uh, it's uh, dangerous. Well, my wife does most of the cooking, and you should never, <laughs> never, mess, never mess with <laughs> anyone who's preparing your food. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. Right. Anyway, uh, th- you're both wrong. We are? Yeah, how about them apples? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. you're both wrong, but if your boyfriend is coasting down hills, he's more wrong than you. Oh, more God. wronger. <laughs> more wronger than you, even. Yeah. Yeah, well, you shouldn't downshift. To, I'll tell you the right way to do it. Rather than explain how both of you are wrong, I'll just explain the right way to do it. Okay. So that you'll, you'll know how to do it. Let's, this is the right way according to my brother. <laughs> so that still might be wrong? That could be wrong, <laughs> too. Well, that remains to be seen. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll describe a scenario. You're driving along a city street at 30 miles an hour, and up ahead you see that the light is red, and you're in third gear. Mm-hmm. You should remain in third gear as long as possible, applying pressure to the brake pedal to slow you down. Staying in third. Okay. At some point, as you get closer to the stoplight, obviously, you're going to realize that third gear is the wrong gear to be in, and the car will let you know that because it may even start to buck a little bit. At which point... You should step on the clutch and downshift into second, but don't let your foot off the clutch. You're in second gear in the event that you have to do something like run over a cat, avoid running over a cat, and and you're ready to spring into action. 
And if need be, you can you can then coast to the stop with your foot on the clutch. You're in second gear. You'll coast to the stop, at which point you will shift it with your foot still on the clutch into neutral, take your foot off the clutch, sit at the light, and wait for it to turn green in neutral. When it turns green, you step in the clutch, you shift into first, and you go. Pretty good, huh, Tommy? That's pretty good. I'll buy that. Okay. What about the pot with the rope and the, and the rock? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that some other time. Okay, and the door. You have to open the door to do this. So have you, But the, the danger is we should mention that you should not coast. Okay. Uh, it's dangerous yeah, to coast. I that was right. You sure don't want to coast down a hill. Yeah, you should never coast more, at more than, say, five miles an hour. Yeah. I think that would, that would be the cutoff point for yeah. me. But you should always be in gear. The fact that you, – what's your boyfriend's name? Brandon. Brandon. The fact that Brandon's father – has taught him to do it this way. It means that Brandon's father is a cheapskate of the first order. I mean, this guy is thinking about, if you practiced what Brandon preaches, over a lifetime of driving, maybe 70 years of driving, you might save a quarter in gas. That's assuming that as we go out in time, gasoline will go up to like $50 a gallon. Well, it's adjusted for inflation. It's adjusted for, you might save 25 cents over a lifetime. Now, do you want to get involved with a guy who might have inherited the genes well, you, that are making his father do this? Well, I bet you if, if it, Brandon well, probably did not inherit the genes <laughs> from his <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> yeah. No, is, is Brand, you can tell you've gone out with this guy for two years. Is uh-huh. he, a, is he a, a, a cheapskate? He's not, but his dad is. Uh, <laughs> you may not realize that no matter what, we all turn into our parents sooner or later. No. So in your dotage, this guy is going to have you eating dog food. <laughs> hey, good luck, Candace. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you. Boy, that's a wonderful thought. Well, it's the truth. one car talk That's 888 My mother-in-law, on the other hand, is the sweetest, most wonderful woman you could ever meet. She paid me to say this. And my wife, <laughs> my wife is slowly... Turning into that. <laughs> I'm you, done for. You think that <laughs> I don't have light in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is we screen it in for you? <laughs> the bugs must be rough in the summer, huh? <laughs> One eight 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 car talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on car talk. Hi, this is Howard. I'm calling from Randolph Mass. Hey, I know where that is. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, maybe uh, since since you answered the first question right, maybe you can answer a couple more for me about tires. <laughs> yeah, we're on a roll here, Hal. Indeed, What's up? Indeed. Um, I recently had flats on two separate tires uh, on my two Toyotas. Uh, on the the right rear tire, I got uh, objects in the sidewall, and uh, uh, I, as a result of having to scrap two tires, I had a, a couple of questions for you about tires. Yeah. First of all, is it possible? Is it really possible for uh, radials or any tire to to pick up uh, nails and pins and other objects so easily in the sidewall? Uh, on both of these two vehicles, right? On separate occasions, separated by how many days? Oh, uh, three, four days. Three, you found a sharp object protruding in, from the sidewall. Exactly. I found a nail in one. I, I didn't find the nail. I, mean, I had a flat and I took it into to be sure. repaired. Yeah. And they found the nail. And in the second one, I found one of those push pins that people use on bulletin boards. Oh. Push pin? That didn't blow out any tire. It must have been a hell of a bulletin board. <laughs> Maybe somebody was trying to pin a note on my tire having to do with my hand signal. <laughs> yeah, the note said, I think you have a flat. <laughs> and they, put, they, they pinned it right to the tire. Okay, yeah. that's, your fir- that's your first question. Right. Second, Second is, question is, why don't any of your neighbors like you? <laughs> no, that's, that, that I know why. Oh, okay, we uh, know about that. The second question is, to what extent can you substitute with different, uh, with tires of different sizes? I mean... Uh, sizes? Yeah, well, for, I mean, I, I, have, I think this car takes like 155 slash 70 SR 13s. And I had uh, mounted and ready to go a 165 SR 13. Mm. Well, you you can put that on. Uh, the the only danger with mixing the, that first number indicates the width of the of the tire in in millimeters. Okay. Okay. So the bigger the number, the the wider the tire is. Not the bigger in diameter, but the the bigger its footprint. Okay. And the obvious danger is if you have a big footprint on one side and a little one on the other side, the thing's going to behave peculiarly when you're doing things like going around That's turns, right. when you're trying to stop quickly. 
Right. Now, I just did this for a couple of days, but it got me wondering if, if in fact, because I do, in fact, have two brand new 165 13s in the garage. Uh huh. I would never mix them on on one axle. Right. But you can you can certainly put pairs of of like kinds. Exactly. Okay. So that's okay, and that's it. Okay. So. What about the first question? I forgot. Well, what was the first question? The first Where's question was why why don't his neighbors like him? No, and the first question is why can can these tires really pick up so much junk on the side? Oh yes. No. <laughs> not within not two different cars in the same driveway. Within three days, it didn't of each happen other. in his driveway. It did too. No, it did not. That's why I noticed it. You noticed? Of course, you noticed it. You know why? Why? That's where you park. But oh. that, no, but what doesn't, do you do for a look. living? Uh, I'm a consultant. You're a consultant. What kind? <laughs> do I have to say? Well, no, but I mean, just I just I'm gonna I'm no, gonna I'll ask I'm gonna more... explain in in statistical terms what's going on here. And, I'll ask the more important and question. I know you'll understand this. Okay. I just did a little calculation using Bayes' theorem. Okay. You're familiar with Bayes' theorem. Certainly. The probability of both of these tires having something sticking out of the side of them, knowing the base rate of this, is .00016. Oh, dear. <laughs> Therefore, the conclusion is yes. one of your neighbors is out to get you. Do you have a dog, Howard? No, but we do have a neighbor that everybody's a little bit suspicious of. Well, no, look at your tires every day, because when you get the third one, then you'll know. Uh-huh. That it has nothing to do no, now, with I, chance. Not to dispute my my older, the Reverend wiser, Thomas Bays doesn't the lie. Older, wiser brother. <laughs> you looked out handsomer, with, bon vivant, with, with good reason. Devil may care. <laughs> you drive over the same roads every day, which takes this this probability and increases it by about a thousand times because you you did the same. You drove over the same spot two days in a row, three days in a row, four days in a row. With someone who had thrown some junk in the road, like nails or screws. Nails or... and push pins. Push Come on, Howard. Tell them that you don't use these two cars on the same route. Oh, well, the... I do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, oh, I know. Howard, get Howard, off the phone. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. Oh. Well, oh, it's man. happened again. You have squandered another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, bongo boy, Frogman Berman. Our associate <laughs> producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman, and our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor just back from his must see conquest. 